So perhaps you have a Windows 8 machine or a Windows 10 machine and you're interested in doing native backups for the sake of uh, minimizing the size of these videos, I highly recommend you first head over to the notes in this um, description and there I'll have a link to the Windows 7 native backups series and the first chapters will be a, a general introduction to the environment, um, how to navigate around in the video, in the, all the videos, um, the, the environment that it's been set up with respect to virtualization, if you're interested in that, and then a description about files, folders, directories, and libraries. Um, also, a, an explanation of the difference between drives, partitions, and relevant to the type of firmware your machine, a BIOS or a UEFI, and and lastly, the difference between file backups and system backups. After you've finished going through those chapters, you can come back here to the relevant video and continue to watch it. Otherwise, we're just going to jump right in and you might get yourself a little bit confused. Let's have a look now at Windows 8 and its environment. We have a Windows 8.1 virtual machine running here, 64-bit. I'm going to have a look at the disk. Now this disk, disk 0, where the operating system drive or, or partition is, there is the system reserved partition, which is more typical of machines that you would see out there and perhaps your own. Um, you may, may also have a uh, recovery partitions that are also on the same disk as your operating system disk. Disk 1 is the backup drive and disk 2 which we will see later is currently attached as a blank USB drive. We'll be using that for the recovery partition. Getting into the backup section of Windows 8 is a, a little different. Best to go from the control panel and launching file history. First you do have to select a drive I'm going to pick the backup drive. I do have previous backups, but uh, ignore those. I could, by the way, choose a, a network location, just like with Windows 7. I'm going to hit OK, and it's going to say uh, it's it's uh, seeing that I'm going to intend on using file history again, which is normal. You wouldn't normally see that if you're doing this for the first time. Now there's not a lot of options other than simply running this backup now, turning it off. Um, in terms of exclusions, you would simply come up here and say exclude folders and this is where you would manually exclude directories um, or folders that you did not want to include in the backup history. So these are excluded directories. And then under advanced settings, you can see where the copies of files, how, how often, every 10 minutes all the way to every 24 hours, how much of the hard disk space is saved for these backups, 5% being the default, all the way to 20% of disk space, and then the length of duration of, um, of uh, how long do the backups live on your system, forever or until space is needed, all kinds of variations there. I'm not going to make any changes to that. And that's pretty well it. Well, I'll just hit run now and backups are being done um, on a schedule every, every hour I believe as we've set it. And that's it for doing backups. Um, there's no nothing more to do in terms of backing up your libraries, documents, contacts and uh, items like that. So far, Windows 8 backups only include your personal stuff. It does not include, include the system image. That's what this button is for. We'll click System Image Backup. And here, like in Windows 7, we can specify a local disk, DVDs, or network location. I'm going to simply specify um, the disk, which is already pre-checked. I'm going to hit Next and it'll tell me what is it going to do. Um, the size of the backup is going to be approximately 14 gig 
any existing system images might be overwritten, which is understandable, and the two drives are going to be backed up. This is different than your Windows 7 environment. We're just backing up. Uh, we were just backing up the operating system uh, partition, the, the, the C drive. And uh, in this situation, because our operating system depends on this system reserved uh, partition, um, it's going to be included. And there's no way of unchecking that. I'm going to click on Start Backup. And the backup will write out to our backup drive. And we'll look at that um, in a few moments to see what it looks like. OK, the backup is now done. Let's have a look at what that backup looks like. We'll minimize this, <clears throat> get over to our backup drive. We'll see that we have a Windows image backup, which you don't normally interface with. You'll be getting permissions issues because you don't necessarily need to browse for it manually. You'll also see that there's a file history uh, directory, and in there is the computer name and the username, and then there is the data from the hard drive C from the user Steve, and these are all the individual backup files that were created for the file backups. And if necessary, I could go into here and look for a specific document, highlight and copy it and paste it to another location. That's probably not normally the way you do it. Let's use it using the GUI in a sec. The Windows 8 file restoration process is done easiest using uh, within file history going to restore personal files and here you'll see a, a GUI interface first selecting the date of the backups. The last one is set by default and from here if I was to hit this button here it would restore everything that's visible and all the files underneath each of these directories to the original locations. If I wanted to simply just get all documents, I can hit that button and then hit this button here and it will give me an option to restore the four files that are underneath the documents, replacing the files in the original uh, destination folder. Because those files still exist in this situation, it would overwrite those four and you would need to manually uh, select here skipping or choosing of each or replacing of each. That, that's up to you to do. If the files were not present and you're restoring from a from a totally new system, then then you wouldn't even, wouldn't even get this prompt. So that's how you would restore individual files or folders, files within folders, using the GUI in Windows 8. Windows 8 includes a nifty little way of getting at the system restore utility without needing to build media. Let's first um, create a situation here. Let's say I'll go to my music directory and I'll delete those files. And I may have, uh, that'll simulate a situation that I want to get out of. Now I want to do a restore. I could go to control panel. Then in file history, you'll see that there's a button here called recovery. Optionally, I can just simply go to something here that's called recovery. And once within recovery, it says here, if you're experiencing problems with your PC, you can refresh it in PC settings. These first two options require the use of the original CD. We're not doing that. We're going to restart the computer now. Here it says start up from a device or disk such as a USB drive or DVD, change the Windows startup settings, or restore Windows from a system image. We're going to wind up doing that third option here. This will restart your PC. So we'll restart it now. And quite quickly, the computer will go to this option, which is to go, what, what we need to do is to go to troubleshoot. And then under advanced option, you'll see system image recovery. Let's go to that. 
the system will reboot in a way kind of similar to what we discovered in the Windows 7 environment. Now here, the difference here is we have to log on as the person on this system with authority to do this. And now it'll give us a chance to manually pick the latest system backup, or if we needed to, to browse for a specific backup, I will quick click the most current system backup. The devices is a little tricky. Um, that's a, a very confusing looking way of expressing the C drive. You, I've, you've seen this screen before in the Windows 7 environment. You do not get a choice to format and repartition the disk. That will be taken care of automatically. There's no options to exclude disks. We're going to s select next and then select finish. One last chance to say no, but we're going to say yes. And let's see what this looks like in a few minutes when it's done. The disk image restoration is done and it'll automatically reboot. I'll set that right now and see how it looks when it's done. The system is up. Let's see if our documents are still there. That was music. Look at that. So we recovered our music from our backups using the native um, backup restoration tool similar to Windows 7 without the need for emergency recovery media. Assuming of course that you have a functioning computer to do that from. In the next part we're going to have to create that media in emergency situations. We need to proactively create our Windows emergency media. In this situation, we're going to be doing it directly to a USB key, as this um, Windows 8 environment does not permit the creation of a CD-ROM like it did in Windows 7. So I already have a USB key, 8 gigs in size, formatted and, and given the name blank so I can see it later. It's installed and attached and ready to go. I need to then go to the control panel and then into recovery. And the first option is create a recovery drive. I'll say yes to that. And um, same as Windows 7, this screen. I'm clicking next. I'm going to pick the blank drive. I'll be warned that that drive is going to be uh, erased and uh, dedicated to this process. I'll hit create and I'll wait for a few minutes for this to be complete. Okay, the recovery drive is completed. Let's close this out. Have a quick peek at what it looks like. It's uh, now been labeled recovery and it has a, a bunch of files available for recovery. Let's shut this computer down and boot from the key and see what it looks like. The recovery media that you've created in Windows 8, fortunately, um, is universal for both UEFI and uh, BIOS style firmware. So it just did some tests. So what I did was I created um, a BIOS based firmware recovery media, which I labeled BIOS recovery. So, and within the BIOS recovery, we do see the EFI necessary files for booting both BIOS and UEFI type firmwares. We go into great detail about um, I bias in UEFI in the chapter in the Windows 7 and Windows 10 uh, parts of this um, tutorial. So you may want to refer over there. It doesn't seem to bite you in the Windows 8 environment. And I can test that right now. I've essentially attached the uh, BIOS created firmware, BIOS created uh, USB recovery media, and it's attached to this machine. 
And so what we'll do first is um, restart this machine in a BIOS style firmware environment, which looks like this, and modify this little Kung Fu here. That is actually the USB key sort of hot wired here. We're going to make sure we're booting from that first. So this should be the booting from a physical USB key on a BIOS style machine, which would normally work because it is media that was created from a BIOS style firmware. Once this boots, we'll be given our keyboard layout selection, which makes sense. I'm going to shut the machine down. And then I'm going to go to adjust the type of firmware, that uh, simulated firmware. So now it is simulated to be a completely different modern type of firmware. I'm going to power on the machine to firmware. And in this case, I'm going to manually pick the same media, which in, is a simulated USB key. And if everything goes well, this will prove that whether it's UEFI or BIOS firmware, the media created with the BIOS environment will boot on either machine. I've done tests with the uh, creating the media in a UEFI environment and, and the results are the same. If you're concerned about any kind of incompatibility, then just simply label the media you create accordingly so that um, you know what you have um, before you go ahead and uh, after you've tested, obviously, before you park it for the future. But this seemed to work no problem. Let's intentionally damage our Windows 8 installation by doing something like making a change to the music directory. So those files are now gone. And now I'm going to shut the computer down. My key is attached. I do need to make adjustments to the BIOS in order to boot from the key. Yours will be very different looking than this, but it's the same concept. You'll notice that 00, zero is the CD, uh, the, the C drive. This would be the D drive, and this new letter would have been um, the the USB key. I'm going to make sure its its setting is higher than the hard disk. Yours will look a lot different than this because this is sort of kung fu with uh, VMware. I'm going to exit and save changes and it will boot now from the USB key. I'll pause it while it's uh, doing that. It takes a few moments. Okay, it's almost done booting. The first option is the language setting. We'll need to go to troubleshoot, advanced options, and system recovery. It'll find the latest image. I can manually browse for a specific image like before. I'll pick the most latest image. Now the devices is a little different looking than what you're familiar with. This is, uh, at the end here you'll see the C drive, so don't be confused. The rest of this is actually what the computer uses as a reference to the, to the drive, but you don't need to know that or memorize that, of course. I'll hit next. The checking of format and repartition disks is not available. And we're going to click Next. Uh, one chance to validate what we're doing. Uh, an interruption warning in case things uh, go south, but uh, it's not going to here. Finish, and then a restoration warning saying everything in the destination drive is going to be wiped out with the system image. Let's do it. I'll come back to this when it's done. Okay, so restoration is almost complete. Now, uh, if we were to let it to automatically restart, it will reboot from the USB key, which we don't want. So we'll be picking don't restart, and then we conveniently have a turn off your PC setting. We're going to need to 
change the BIOS setting again. Go to my firmware, down to boot, in my case to hard drives, and I'll take what I know is the key and I'll bring it below the primary hard drive, the zero here, the C drive. I'll save those changes, hit enter, let's cross our fingers that it looks like it's booting. That looks good. I'll pause for a sec during the boring part. Okay, here we go, logging on automatically. And crossing fingers, our data's back. Whoop, it is still back. That was just a, a little glitch thing. So uh, yeah, we have successfully restored from our backup image using the USB key. Okay, for this next part of the video, we're actually going to switch over to using a physical machine. Um, I was running into problems trying to boot the recovery media uh, with uh, VMware, and it was tripping me up and thinking there was an actual problem. You have to excuse the video. It, it does pulse once in a while. I don't know what it is. I've worked on it for far too long. Um, it's really a, a, a camera that's filming my uh, Asus physical laptop here. So I'm sorry about the pulsing. So in, in this situation, what we're going to do is we're simulating a, uh, a machine that's in the worst case scenario. It's not yet in the worst case scenario, but I'm going to get it there. And what I'm going to do is um, hopefully gain control here. I'm going to shut the machine down right to, right to uh, total shutdown see me in the background there. This is all being filmed during the whole COVID stuff. So it's a little uh, little bit messy what's going on in the background there. I think the computer is still shutting down. Now it is officially off. I'm going to turn on my computer and hit the F2 key, which is uh, the key required on, on this particular ASUS model to get into the, to the UEFI. Then the option um, at the bottom there says boot menu, which is uh, F8. And then I'm going to go down to my Kingston UEFI media, which has been um, already created, and hit enter. Now hopefully my streaming little uh, machine here will continue to work during this part of the video. Now I'm going to try to do this live. I'm actually going to intentionally damage the operating system partition. This is something you, you can watch, but you don't necessarily need to know or do or understand. So I've booted, let me grab the correct mouse. I've booted my computer. I'm going to go to troubleshoot, advanced options, and uh, command prompt. Now you would not normally need to do this. I'm just demonstrating. I'm doing this live. There's a tool. Whoops, wrong keyboard. There's a tool called Disk Part. A very powerful tool. Highly recommend you don't uh, use it willy-nilly. But it's a good tool to learn if you need to do any kind of partition management, uh, formatting of partitions, all kinds of powerful things without a GUI. So with this with this part, I'm going to list the disks that are on this system. Uh, whoops, I always mix that up. List disk, and there's three disks. There's disk zero, which is my uh, one terabyte backup drive. I'm not touching that, obviously. Disk one is a 29 gig um, uh, disk, which is actually the Asus internal SSD. And then disk two is my boot disk, my 16-ish gig uh, boot drive. So I do a select disk. Oops, I spelled that wrong. Come back. This is really hard to do. Select disk one. Be very careful to select the correct disk. In my case, disk one. 
and then one command clean and it's gone so now I'm going to exit out of that now you wouldn't ne necessarily need to do that I just wanted to show it to you live I'm going to go back over to my my uh, environment here and let's just pretend that you didn't see that this system was hosed and you booted from your media as normal and you wanted to do a system image recovery so ignoring all of what I just did just just for the fun of it of doing it live we would be doing a system image recovery so here we go it finds my backup drive luckily it's attached and it's visible and found and um, the format and uh, repair is, is obviously uh, checked off you could go through here and I think it's a good idea select disks to exclude from the restore process these disks will not be so we wanted to exclude that and exclude that is the disk I can't exclude so I want to say exclude the uh, the data traveler what which is my disk that will not be formatted obviously we will be formatting this disk this is the 30 gig drive the, the internal drive which I need to format and then this one here it doesn't really tell you which one it is but I can see that that is my backup drive and it's already excluded okay so now we are ready to hit next and hit finish and we'll get our last warning all disks to be restored will be formatted and replaced with the layout and data in the system image are you sure you want to continue crossing fingers that this process will start correctly you'll know if you get a couple seconds into the restore process if it if it's going to work <laughs> yeah and it is going to work so what i'll do is i'll pause this video hopefully the stream will continue until then and we'll get back to what we see after this process is done okay so the restore was successful I hope at least uh, the system thinks the restore was successful and it's going to do an automatic reboot in a few moments and um, I'll just hit restart now if I get the correct mouse and this should reboot this machine quite normally from that backup that's on my portable hard drive and uh, after this looks like it'll boot Actually, I might as well just pause here for a second. It won't take much longer. So that's good. That's that's the boot manager I set up on this machine. I happen to be using Macrium Reflect for other backup as another backup tool. So it's going to select Windows 8.1, and that's my system as as it was when I made the backup so this is perfect the recovery media that you create in windows 8.1 uh, whether it's from a, a bios firmware or a uefi firmware works in both and will recover from your uh, any kind of situation including a, a formatted disk i imagine it would be identical if you would put in a different disk as well should not be a problem so i hope this helps